All right, it is now 7.03. Again, um, I am very grateful for everyone taking time out to join us this evening. Uh, I, my name is Natasha Janelle. I am here tonight. This is our new beginning uh, women and veteran farmers uh, meeting. We do meet here monthly at this uh, link at 7 p.m. every thir Thursday of the month. You can find us here as we, um, we have a guest speaker each Thursday and we also um, provide some resources. So just a few announcements today before I introduce our wonderful speaker this evening. Um, C4 Life will resume in September. Um, that is for children two to 11 years old. So just check in with our website or on our social media um, at Grow Well Aiken County to uh, get those dates and to stay informed on everything that's going on. Um, if you haven't already, please visit our website and also sign up for um, to receive any information. Um, if you are looking to get some assistance where you are interested in starting any gardening or um, interested in any resources for, uh, for farmers, again, New Beginning, Women and Veteran Farmers, you can go to the growwellakincounty.net and uh, you can sign up there uh, with our, in our form and we will definitely connect with you. Um, and just so our veterans, I have some information here about the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, it's the woundedwarriorproject.org. There are a lot of resources there for um, veterans uh, to connect with agriculture needs, to connect with um, mental health, wellness, um, just all types of things they offer in person and virtual courses as well. So if you know a veteran or you are a veteran on the call, um, please look into the woundedwarriorproject.org. It will uh, definitely provide some additional assistance and resources there as well. Um, and our last announcement would be um, for the second annual AgriTour. If you log on to agritour.guide, there is a chat box that is there to answer all of your agriculture needs. Um, if you are wanting to know more about how the NRCS can assist you, um, you will ask the chat box. If you're looking to find out conservation practices, that chat box can answer you. So um, definitely if you're looking to get any type of questions answered and it, it goes a little um, more in depth and it's surrounding um, agriculture. So it's very in tune with being able to answer your questions. Um, if there's something that um, you need further assistance with, someone from the agritour.guide team will contact you if you are interested. And if you um, also, you can sign up on the website there and you can provide your name and your email address for the chat box and it will register you as well. And so that is all of the announcements that I have. Um, Judy, uh, Danielle, um, Cynthia, are there any additional announcements that you guys can think of? Oh, okay. No, I think you got it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and so we are here this evening for the man of the hour. Um, I am very, very happy to introduce everyone to Mr. Garrett Minifield. He's a passionate farmer from North Augusta, South Carolina. He brings nearly five years of dedicated experience to the field of horticulture. At the age of 28 years old, Garrett is the owner of two thriving gardens in the CSRA area, Mini Fields Garden Microgreens and Retro Gardens LLC. His expertise spans from cultivating nutrient-rich microgreens to managing diverse garden operations, reflecting a deep commitment to sustainable and innovative farming practices. Uh, Garrett's enthusiasm for gardening and his hands-on experience make him a valuable contributor to the local farming community. 
And just to add some additional value, um, I am very, very thrilled uh, to be in the mix and have Garrett on our team. He's a very valuable asset and just, he's 28 years old, right? He's a young man that is out here learning how to grow and to feed his community with organic food. Um, and he's willing to teach others. So it's always beautiful to have someone that looks like us, but also can reach that younger audience. And um, that, that's our future, that's our tomorrow. And so I just want to say gratitude for everything you do, Garrett. I am going to pass the mic over to you. Um, We're very grateful to have you this evening. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, beautiful intro. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Garrett. Garrett Minifield, like Janelle said. Um, yeah, I just uh, I'm about five years in with my gardening experience. Um, and I'm happy to be here to just share some of my knowledge can y'all hear me? Y'all can hear me okay? Okay. Uh, very happy to be here so I can uh, share some of my knowledge um, with y'all. And hopefully y'all can join me on this plant journey. Um, and that'll lead us all into a healthier lifestyle. Um, I just kind of wanted to just talk about my intro to farming. Because um, I believe the more I talk with people about it, I believe the starting, uh, the thought of getting started with gardening, gardening is the most intimidating. So I kind of just want to share my story. Um, I do not have a gardening or farming background whatsoever. Um, my dad was from Chicago. My mom is from South Georgia. They grew up around farms, but none of my grandparents were farmers. Um, so I grew up, you know, just normal. Um, my first love was music. So after I uh, graduated high school, I moved to Atlanta in pursuit of a music career. Um, and that worked out pretty good all the way up until um COVID um that's really uh the start I'll say the start of my uh plant journey I'll call it um so during COVID um I actually got misplaced from it and I moved around to several different places uh but I actually ended up uh moving to Colorado a friend of mine reached out to me and um said hey I know this man who works in the cannabis industry who needs help working at his farm um, so that's how I ended up, uh, start, I started growing in the cannabis industry out in Colorado. Um, aside from that at home in Colorado, I had a small container garden, which I'll show, um, examples of container gardens later on in the presentation I'm put together. Um, but just started off with that small container garden. I grew a bunch of zucchinis. It wasn't anything crazy, like how you see the big commercial farms with the gigantic rows. It was none of that. It was just you know, a seed in a pot with some soil. Um, but anyway, I did that for about two years, um, coming home in late December 2022, I believe it was. Um, and from there, um, I wasn't able to, obviously I wasn't able to grow cannabis anymore. So uh, I actually started up a microgreens company with a couple of my friends. Um, I, is anybody familiar with microgreens at all? microgreens we got Chanel are you familiar uh, yes. with microgreens yeah yes. yeah yes. so microgreens yeah microgreens are just pretty much for the folks who don't know microgreens are pretty much just the teeny tiny baby plants right when that seed sprouts it's just the uh immediate sprout right after that seed cracks open um and people eat those because they are can be up to 40 times more nutritious than the adult vegetable itself. So for example, a lot of people use kale and let's say they're morning smoothie. Uh, if you were to switch over and use microgreen kale, you could possibly be getting up to 40 times more nutrition than just using the entire uh, kale leaves. And um, I have a picture here. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen um, so we can get into this presentation. But I wanted to show you all a picture of the microgreens. Um, here's a picture of my setup here at home. Um, this full rack over here on the left that you're seeing, uh, it holds about 20 trays. I take those trays out to the Augusta market 
and we sell those out at the Augusta market. We're looking to actually get into some grocery stores here in the local area. Um, but uh, we'll let you know whenever that happens. But for now, you can find us at the market every Saturday down on the boardwalk, uh, down on the river walk. Um, and we're right there in the middle aisle. So you'll be able to see us. But yeah, so this is what I was doing whenever I moved back home. Um, did this for about a year um, while also eventually starting up the uh, Retro Gardens LLC. Uh, that's the five acre field that I manage now. Um, and I don't, I didn't get any pictures of it for the slideshow, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's just my background into, into farming. Nothing fancy. No, you know, I'm not the sixth generation farmer. Um, and hopefully that inspires you to, you know, start farming on your own. You don't have to come from that to start doing it on your own. Um, but today I put together this slide. So I just want to talk about the importance of growing your own food um, and exploring the benefits of farming and gardening um, for a healthier lifestyle. And I hope you all enjoy this presentation. I love using Prezi because they do little funky little transitions in the slides. You'll see like that. Okay, well, let me move this out the way. All right, so the reason most of us want to garden, which is a very good reason, is we want to garden for a healthier lifestyle. Uh, so growing your own food promotes healthier eating habits and ensures access to fresh, nutritious produce, leading to improvised physical health, well-being, and overall, oh, excuse me, lost my place. Got to slow down and read, folks. Nutritious produce leading to improvised physical well-being and overall health. Right. Sorry. Here we go. All right. Um, so, again, uh, most of us want to start growing our own food or eating healthier um, just to... Um, ensure a little bit more longevity in our lives. Homegrown vegetables are packed with essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that support overall health and wellness. By consuming fresh produce, individuals can boost their immune system and reduce the risk of chronic diseases. You know, this is just, you know, basic information. They tell you from the time you're a kid to eat fruits and vegetables, so y'all know that much. Um, but I bet a bunch of people didn't know that once you start gardening, once you start farming, or once you start doing any activities like this, that that'll lead you into a larger community. Um, when I moved back home, um, I, it was just me and my friends uh, that started our microgreens company. Um, but since then, going out to the market, uh, my community, the folks around me, or just the amount of friends that you'll meet along your journey, the amount of people that I've met along my journey will increase because that's just the, what plants do. Growing your own food can strengthen communities and help you save money. Move to the next slide. Um, so engaging in gardening fosters a sense of community as individuals come together to share knowledge, resources, and harvest, promoting social connections, mutual support, and a sense of belonging. Because um, yeah, gardeners love to talk about what they're planning, talk about what they're harvesting, share their different methods. Um, it's just, you know, I don't know if you have other habits like mine, I, I have music. Whenever you're really excited about something or whenever you really love something, uh, you just can't stop talking about it. Gardeners, they tend to be just like that. They love to talk about, share tricks of the trade. Um, and there's a, a million things to learn. If you ask uh, the same question to 10 different gardeners, you'll probably get 10 different answers. So there's never, you're never going to run out of information. Um, so that's a good thing about building community. Sorry, I'm moving this. There we go. All right. So gardening brings people together. Um, sorry, I had that slide in there twice. Um, so saving money. Growing your own food can significantly significantly reduce grocery bills and expenses. By cultivating fruits and vegetables at home, individuals can enjoy fresh organic produce at a lower cost, contributing to financial savings and sustainability. So uh, I think when people think about gardening and their own food, they think about saving the money, um, you know, because they're not having to go to the grocery store and buy it, you know, they just grew it at home, which costs little to nothing. Um, but I want everybody to just think a little bit bigger than that. 
Uh, I talked about this at um another event we spoke about, me and you know, spoke at a couple weeks ago at um, Nutritious Alternatives in Augusta. And it was just about possibly like shrinking our food system. So just think about, say if I grow tomatoes and Janelle grows potatoes and um, Miss Judy grows, let's see, onions, um, that's three crops that we don't have to go to the grocery store for. And we don't necessarily have to spend money to each other. We can just trade the crop itself. So it's not just uh, you save money at home growing what you grow. You can actually create a system with your neighbor. Um, and that way, all three of you can save money. And then all three of you also have vegetables. So I think that's something a lot of communities across the country should sort of look into, especially with commercial gardeners doing whatever they're doing to the fruit. It's just not good as good as it needs to be in the grocery store. Um, so yeah, uh, growing organically, um, you know, growing organically, um, sorry, I'm trying to blank y'all, but uh, growing organically is uh, good for your health in so many different ways. Um, the act of gardening can contribute to increased life expectancy by reducing stress, promoting physical activity and fostering a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Ultimately, enhancing overall well-being and longevity um real quick before i read this slide um if everybody has a piece of paper or your phone or just another tab on your computer i want you to look up a show on netflix it is called live to 100 enter the blue zones live to 100 enter the blue zones um, and on that show, it's a guy named Dan Butner. He travels around to different places around the world to where they have the highest life expectancy. Um, and I think this show is very interesting as it relates to gardening is uh, because what Dan found in his studies, I believe he went to, there was a place in um, South America. There is a place right here in America, uh, in California. There's one in Okinawa, Japan. Um, these are called the blue zones. These are places where people average their average life expectancy is over a hundred years, easily over a hundred years. And he went there to study what these places have in common. What he found was that most of these places did the same three, maybe four things. And one of those things was everybody, mostly everybody grew their own food at home. Um, you know, we talked about how growing your own food at home has effects on your health directly just because you're eating fresh produce um it helps you financially so naturally you're less stressed because you're not worried about money as much because you're growing your own food you don't have to worry about it and uh like this slide is about to say um gardening promotes physical exercise the people in those places every day they would get up and go outside um to their gardens and these are, were not young folks. These were folks in their, I would say, 80s, 90s. They were, you know, elderly people. They would get up and go tend to their garden, just very uh, low impact exercise. And that was enough for them. So eating healthy, uh, growing your own food, low impact ex exercise, and staying close with family was, I think, that fourth thing that those families had. But um, uh, what was it called? Live to 100, enter the blue zones, find it on Netflix, worth the watch. Uh, and you'll probably see a bunch of stuff that we're talking about here today on this slide. But um, yeah, engaging in gardening activities promotes physical exercise, reducing stress levels and improving mental health. The sense of accomplishment and connection to nature that gardening offers can enhance overall well-being and quality of life. Improving overall health and lifespan. So just what I was saying, regular garden, gardening activities contribute to improvise physical health, reduce stress levels, and enhance mental well-being, leading to a longer and healthier life. So literally, besides the fact that you're eating more vegetables, the actual activity of gardening can help you live longer. Like just, just simply by doing gardening, you can live just a tad bit longer. And I think that's very, not only interesting, but worth it. Um, especially in today's climate, before I get into the, how do I get started? I'm very passionate about that. 
um, just because uh, I'm sure you all noticed the change in the produce at the grocery store. Um, also, uh, I'm sure we all have had a, hopefully not, but I know some of us have had a family member over the past couple of years or so um, have their health decline. And, um, you know, as time goes on, things getting more weirder, Bill Gates buying up all the farmland, which is a real thing. I think is important important for us to put our health back in our own hands, opposed to just relying on the grocery stores and the doctors, um, because they've shown themselves untrustworthy over the past couple of years. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, specify my passion about that because um, yeah, it's all about longevity. You know, we work so hard every day. We need to be able to, or we should want to be able to enjoy our life for as long as we can. Um, and most of that, the biggest part of that, um, or what would help with that is our diet. If we got our diet together, stop eating out so much, stop all the processed foods, you know, take the time to grow and, uh, uh, store your own food. I believe that'll make a great impact and not only in your household, but in our entire community. Okay. So with that being said, you might be wondering, Garrett, how do I get started? How do I start growing? I don't have space to grow. I don't have a yard. That's okay. We're going to talk about it right now. So, uh -oh. I don't know what that was. Okay. So, we're going to talk about just a couple different growing practices. Uh-oh. It's got me off track. Sorry, y'all. I got to exit out. And let me get down to, okay, how do I get started? I just want to go over uh, different ways you can set up your garden at home. Um, so first off is our traditional in-ground gardening. Uh, traditional in-ground gardening, we've all seen it before. Uh, you set up these beautiful rows. Sorry, the picture's blurry on this one. But you set up these beautiful rows. Um, it looks like they have a lettuce bed here. Um, this is good for people who have their own land and have a bunch of space that they want to use up. Um, but if not, there are other options. Move to the next slide. This is just another example of a outdoor uh, traditional garden. This is what you would call a raised bed, even though it's not that far off the ground, you would still call it a raised bed. Um, and I want to note with this picture, y'all, it, it 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 does not have to be expensive. Once you all start doing your own research, you're going to find a bunch of gardeners trying to sell you, oh, you need this $200 uh, raised bed or you need this whatever. They're going to try to upcharge you a whole bunch of stuff. Don't fall for it. Like you can see, this person here has a beautiful, it looks like two of them. I see the corner of the other one. A beautiful raised bed garden made out of cinder blocks. And I recently just bought those. Those blocks are about $2 a piece. Um, so you can get a lot done for cheap. Um, yeah, please don't fall for the tricks of some of these garden companies. They'll they'll try to get you. It doesn't cost that much. Um, but okay, let's say you don't have that much space. You have a little bit of space outside, but you don't have enough space for a garden bed like this. What I would recommend, and this is what I did my first grow out in Colorado, is a container garden. Um, container gardens uh, involves growing plants in pots and containers instead of the ground. It's a versatile space efficient method that allows for gardening on patios, balconies, or small yards. Sorry, my alarm going on. Making it ideal for urban environments, this approach enables easy mobility, better control over soil quality, and accommodate uh, varieties of plants from flowers to vegetables. Um, so y'all, this is kind of what I would recommend for beginners, because once you start digging into your ground um, and you start doing more research into that, uh, say you dig into the ground, you might not have the best soil quality in the ground. Um, so growing in containers is a good way to ensure that you're ha you have uh, the proper soil nutrition for your plants, because you would just take one of these pots. And again, it doesn't have to be one of these fancy pots. I've seen people, or I've done it myself, take a five gallon bucket, drill holes in the bottom, works just the same. Um, 
Yeah, that would um I would recommend getting these pots because that way you you can sort of control what it is that um you're putting in the or you can control the soil that your plants are growing in. That's the most important thing with gardening. Don't want to get too sciencey today, but soil is the most important important thing uh, or element when it comes to your plants. Um, here's another example of a container garden. Y'all might recognize these buckets. Some chitlin bu buckets looks like. They got tomatoes growing out of them. But okay, say you have even less space than that. You don't have enough for a container garden. You don't got enough for the chitlin bucket rig. Let's say you only got maybe like a, a wall or something outside or maybe inside. I've seen people put these beautiful hydroponic systems uh, outside or indoors. So hydroponics or hyd yeah, hydroponics means soilless. So this is soilless gardening. Um, that doesn't just mean stuff like in these pipes. They do have soilless mediums like coconut core, which is pretty much just ground up coconut shell. And the fact that it's not um, decomposed matter makes it not soil. So, uh, but today I wanted to specify on these hydroponic tower gardens or flow gardens because these are getting very popular so i just kind of wanted to share some info on those so hydroponic towers are vertical growing systems that use a soilless method to cultivate plants allowing for efficient efficient space utilization in this setup plants grow in stacked containers or tubes with their roots submerged in nutrient rich water hydroponic towers provide excuse me, hydroponic towers provide optimal light exposure and airflow while minimizing water usage. This method is ideal for growing in a growing a variety of herbs, leafy greens, and small vegetables in urban environments or areas with limited space. So like I was saying, you can grow this, you can have one of these either set up outside if you don't have a lot of space outside, or I've even had one of these set up myself, uh, which we'll see in a second. Um, I've set one of these up in my in my home. Uh, you just take one of these totes right here. You can't see inside, or let me flip to the next slide and you can see the components a little bit better. So mine's a little bit different. Instead of the uh, horizontal one, I did the vertical. You can kind of see the uh, holes to put the plants at the top. But pretty much what you would do is you would put a water pump down in the black tote. Um, and use PVC tubing or whatever tubing you got to run it up to the top of these uh, or to the end of your uh, tower. And then water trickles back down and feeds your plants. Um, I like this method just because it's cool. I'm really sciencey and I like electronics. If you're like me, you'll really love hydroponics, um, especially these grow towers. Um, but let's say you don't have any space outside whatsoever. Um, you would think that, oh, I can't grow anything because I don't have any space. I am here to tell you that that's not true because there's a thing called grow tent gardening. Yay. So grow tent vegetable gardening inv involves using a specialized enclosed space to cultivate plants indoors. These tents are designed with reflective materials and controlled environments to optimize light, humidity, and temperature. They allow for year-round, sorry, year-round vegetable production regardless of outdoor conditions. Grow tents can accommodate various growing methods including soil and hydroponics. So you can use soil, like uh, you can put soil in your pots, you can use um, the uh, hydroponic coconut core, or you can put even the tower garden or tube garden right here in this grow tent. And you'll be able to, um, uh, you'll be able to manipulate all the factors such as temperature, the light intensity, uh, you'll be able to control that. I actually, uh, one of my grows in Colorado that I did was probably the same tent. This looks like a five by five uh, Vivo Sun tent. Uh, I used that same tent on one of my grows in uh, Colorado. So. It does work. It is a little bit more expensive than growing outside, but hey, at least you got fresh, fresh vegetables whenever you need them. Here's another picture of another grow setup. These buckets back here, 
if you look in the back corner by the fan, those buckets that those plants are in, those are um, those are uh, hydroponic systems. Pretty much that plant is sitting in a bucket of water. If you've ever seen a um, a vase or a flower that's just growing in a vase of water, that's essentially what you're doing with this. I'm not sure what plant that is, but he has a tomato in there. All you would need to do uh, instead of the soil giving the plant nutrients, you would have uh, the water in the bucket. You would make sure that that water has nutrients in it and it will feed your plants. Okay, so there are a bunch of different uh, methods, ways, places you can grow. Um, do not get discouraged. People, I've seen even crazier setups than the one I've seen. I've seen people take a kitchen rack like the one I, I grew my microgreens on and they grew miniature peppers. Um, it's a, I mean, the list goes on. You can grow pretty much anything. You just gotta get creative. Like I said earlier, if you ask 10 different farmers the same question, you would get 10 different answers. Um, so get creative, test things out because you might come up with a new method that, that nobody else ever heard of before. Um, but yeah, I'm. we're getting at the end of the presentation now. Uh, but I'm hoping with all this, I know I kind of sped through it a little fast. Sorry. Um, but I'm hoping that with all this, um, you kind of got a little inspiration if you haven't already on how you're going to start your garden. Um, if anybody has any questions on anything that I went over, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about anything. Um don't hold back. Whatever you got, you can ask. I have a question. Yes. I'm sorry. I can't Hi. see who's oh, speaking. It's Danielle. Let me stop. Oh, hey, Danielle. There we are. What so, we got? I never heard, I know, I never heard of grow tent. So that caught my attention because, you know, um, I prefer gardening like in the warmer months. Mm -hmm. I've been gardening since 2020, and so last year was my first year gardening year round. Okay. So I'm interested in, like, the grow tents. Like, would I be able to grow, like, summer, like, you know, the peppers and tomatoes? Would I be able to grow that over the winter with the grow tent set up? Absolutely. So the grow tent you can have um, inside. So the main thing, if you're wanting to do summer vegetables in indoors, is going to be light intensity and temperature. Mm -hmm. So that, that grow tent, they have different sizes, by the way. They're not all gigantic like that. Like they have a two by four foot size and a five by five they range. But um, your main thing with that is going to be temperature and um and light intensity and they do make um of course they make little personal uh room heaters that you can put in there to warm up your plants and then they make lights very very powerful led lights that don't jack your um light bill all the way up uh, but will give your plants your tomato plants the adequate amount that they need um how can i do this so i'm gonna share my screen in a minute um, and it has the link to my Instagram, Facebook, and all of that. If you want to share that, I, or if you want to scan the code, I'll share it here in a second. Or if you want to take a look at that or send me an email, reach out some sort of way, I'd be happy to send you links. To, or anybody on the call, if y'all want links to any of this stuff that I'm talking about, I'd be happy to share. Um, but yeah, I'll pull that back up in a second. and I'll. But uh, I hope I answered your question, Danielle. I know I'm right. Yes, you did. You did. No, that was great. And I'll reach out and let, um, well, I'm sure either I'll reach out or the links will be shared. So, okay. I'll share that here in just a second. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, anybody? I, I, this is Judy. And I just want to um, add to what Danielle was saying. I had to go out online and look at these grow tents. I'm also fascinated by it. And they're not that expensive. They're not. They're not. Yeah, no, they're not they're that not. expensive. I believe. I believe I bought a, a a two by four. My two by four, I believe, is just a hundred bucks. Um, and also, if you're if you're crafty, y'all, y'all don't have to buy those tents. I've seen those tents made out of just PVC tubing, and they put a tarp over it. 
-hmm. or maybe they use PVC tubing as the frame and then they used uh, recycled cardboard boxes layered the inside with um, aluminum foil and then there you go you can save yourself a couple hundred bucks doing it that way but if you just rather you know order it and put it together uh, you can do it that way as well both are good both will work um, depending on what you're growing you just want to when it comes to plants y'all it doesn't matter the location the main things you want to worry about is temperature humidity uh, and light intensity and your soil depending on what medium you're using you worry about those things you'll have delicious food delicious plants um all year round i am um, I, I i i see that there are questions in the chat but before we yeah. go to that i i just have two more questions yes, um i've been thinking about doing mushrooms growing mushrooms and mm. it requires the grow tent in mm. the house but i have this thing about bugs right? Which are outside. So I'm, I'm thinking inside won't be as many bugs when you, from your experience, did you have bugs? Sorry. I gotta uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't want to break bad news. So it depends. Right. So, um, I'm not sure about mushrooms. I haven't, uh, mm -hmm. had the opportunity to fully dive into mushrooms yet, but, um, when you're growing indoors, um, if you if you get bugs, it's going to happen only a couple of ways um, is if your grow space is right by access to the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Bugs are I don't know what they got. They got senses. They can tell your plants are in there. Mm -hmm. So they'll slide right through that door and then they'll be in there. Or uh, this is what I would really watch out for, um, especially if you're doing mushrooms. I'm not sure how sterile like the substrate is or the grain is mm -hmm. or if they experience any sort of bugs at all but i would just watch out for it because i experienced this with my bags of cocoa that i use for my microgreens um somewhere along the line in their production and delivery they were kept outside so inside the bag they retain a lot of moisture and with that uh somehow uh you'll get gnats fungus okay. gnats yeah which i i deal with that all the time it's just a part of you know oh, yeah. every right every time i open up a brand new bag of cocoa Mm -hmm. um i i just kind of expect it but um if you go on amazon there are these yellow sticky mats if you experience gnats uh get yellow sticky mats um i wouldn't spray anything around your plants whether it be um whether it be you know uh plants or mushrooms i wouldn't spray anything toxic if anything just like soap like a, a castile soap and water um mm -hmm. but yeah i do i do you i do run into bugs even when indoor growing sometimes it's just a just a part of it all right thank you i appreciate your response of course of course thank you Anybody and we else? have a question at um as well garrett and the question is what are some tips for first-time growers what fruits or veggies would you recommend to start with? So first time growers, I would recommend probably doing zucchini or squash. Zucchini and squash grow in a number of different soil types and they're not as um, nutrient hungry as some other plants like let's say tomatoes or watermelon. Zucchini or squash would be an excellent. And that was my starter plant. And I, you know, knowing what I know now, I did not care for those plants the way I was supposed to. And they still gave me a whole bunch of fruit. Um, so as far as the fruit, I would recommend that. Just the tip, um, I would just the the main tip I would give anybody is y'all just like is just research as much as you can and just really fall in love with what it is that you do. Cause it's it's more than just a hobby. You know, gardening is one of those things, you know, some people call it a hobby, but it genuinely does make your life better and eating better. So um, I would just say, as far as a tip, research as much as you can, look at all the YouTube videos and read all the books. Um, and then as far as the fruit, yeah, get you some zucchinis, get you some squash. Cucumbers are easy, but you're going to need a trellis. Trellis, one of those, or something for those cucumbers to climb up. You've probably seen them in the gardens. Those they probably they make those little arcs 
and the plants just grow up them. That's a trellis. There's a bunch of different styles if you do cucumbers, but cucumbers are pretty easy too. Um, but yeah, those are that would be my my beginner tips. All right. Anybody else? Um, before you go, oh, is there another question in the chat? Uh -uh. Okay, just love. Okay. Oh no, there's one more there, Janelle. Did you want to do? Uh oh. Okay. Well, it just popped up. Rodney yeah. said I will definitely try out and look into hydroponic gardening. Thank you so much. Of course, yes, hydroponic gardening is fun. It's my favorite, low key. But it's a million different options. Um, and I like hydroponic also because it makes you uh, pay attention to nutrients because you, for the most part, be applying them yourself. Um. Mm. But yeah, of course, you're welcome. Okay. But so you talked a lot about um, farming, gardening, gardening at home. And I just want to bring up the fact um, that um, the FSA, okay, even if you're doing your gardening at home, you should get a FSA track number or a farming track number. Let me say that. Right now. Sure. It's an identification number that's assigned to your land. And the reason why I suggest that you do that is because you get benefits from it. And it's a good place to start. Um, I know you're familiar with that. Did you want to say anything about that? Or do you agree? Or? I'm actually, I agree with you 100%. I'm actually, uh, I was just introduced to that that idea a couple of weeks ago. So I'm still um, looking into it myself. But yeah, um, apparently everybody, <laughs> you can, um, if you have, say you got property, say you got a house, uh, you can get a farm, you can register your land as a farm. And uh, once you get that farm ID number, there are additional benefits that come along with doing so. So thank you for that, Miss Judy. I'm still looking into that myself. But uh, mm -hmm. once I get all the details on that, I'll be back to um, tell everybody else. All right. And Janelle and or I can assist. Go ahead, Janelle. I'll be quiet. Oh, it's OK. I, I was going to say the same thing. You can definitely um, reach out to myself or Judy. Just um the easiest way, if you don't have our actual phone numbers or email address, just go on to the growwellacancounty.net, fill out the um, the form there, the inquiry form, and we can definitely give you a contact back. Um, but you would definitely call your local FSA office, Farm Service Administration, and there you can sign up to get your farm and track number. And that is a, a definite place that everyone should start. Uh, if you are interested in accessing a lot of the resources that are going to be available for you. So. Absolutely. And also, again, if um, everyone, you could also go to agritour.guide. There's a chat box there where you can actually ask the chat questions and it will help um, guide you in a direction and provide you information anything related to agriculture. And so it has some amazing resources there uh, and that it, it can provide you some good information. So, and that's agritour.guide. Um, I'll drop that in the chat for everyone. And I'll also drop in the chat for um, growwellacancounty.net. Are there any other questions for Mr. Garrett? I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Garrett, great job. Proud cousin on this end. Oh, hey, Christy. <laughs> Y'all, this is my cousin, Christy. Thank you, cousin. I love you. Love you, too. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Very nice. And just we appreciate everybody for taking time to join us on tonight's call. Um, Garrett, uh, once again, very, very happy that you are uh, within our network, um, and you are my go-to farmer. We're going to definitely keep you plugged in and, you know, connected as much as we can in all the guidance that we can, we have to offer you. So definitely gratitude for joining us here tonight on the call. As our special guest, you did an amazing job this evening. Um, Thank you. Yes, yes, definitely. 
So yeah, that is, that's it for tonight's call. Um, we are here every third Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please feel free to join us. Um, sign up for the Grow Well Aiken County um, weekly, I mean monthly call. And this is for new beginning women and veteran farmers. Uh, we are here to assist with all resources um, and uh, provide as much help as we can for the Aiken County residents. Okay. All right, and that's it for tonight. I appreciate everybody for joining the call. It's been an awesome one. Y'all have a good night. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Garrett. Good night. Right. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. Yeah.